guys, in today's tutorial, I will show you how to create a first-person maze runner game. Using the Effortless Timer Assistant plugin. First, let's create a new project. Choose the first-person template, set the appropriate settings for the maze runner, and create it. After opening the project, you'll see we've created a first-person shooting game, but now we are creating a maze runner. So, we need to delete the current weapon content and then design the maze level. For example, we can create a maze using the template tools in Content Browser. Now let's build the maze using these meshes. I'll create the walls for the maze, and the video will be fast forwarded. Feel free to pause and take your time setting up your own maze. Finally, we need to mark our end goal. So, place a trigger box into the level. Remember, do not overlap your box with other meshes when placing them. Now I place a cylinder to highlight the destination object. Set up suitable materials for better visuals. This will help players identify it easily. Now, we'll set up the logic. Open the Thedit plugin tab. Make sure you have the Effortless Timer Assistant plugin installed before continuing with the tutorial. This plugin will handle the timer part and it's very easy to use now, go back to the level. We need to implement the timer. First, go to the first person character blueprint and double click it. In the component tab, search for the timer component and add it. This component will show a countdown timer. We can now set up our timer. Select the countdown timer component, go to the details panel, find the timer assistant category, expand it and set the default time. The default value is 60 seconds now which is ok for now. Scroll down to find the events category. Here, you'll see various timer events, such as on start, on update, on update 1 seconds, on times up, and on last 10 seconds. With the timer, you can call functions like start, pause, resume, or end. Now, we need to create a UI to show the current time. In the content browser, right-click and create a new user interface widget. Name it WBP underscore timer and save it. Open it, add a canvas panel, and then a text block to show the timer text. Anchor the text block to the top middle of the screen and set the timer text. Adjust its size. And position for better visibility. Next, we want to dynamically update the remaining time. In the graph panel, create a function to set the timer text. Add an integer input since we don't want a floating point. Number text to show. In the designer tab, make sure the text block is a variable and go back to the graph. Search for the set text function and connect it to the input. Now, go back to the level blueprint. In the begin play event, create a widget and add it to the viewport. Store the widget variable to reference the timer widget we created. If you play the game now, you'll see the timer UI, but nothing changes. We need to start the timer and use the on timer update event to update the UI. Now, we need to start the timer. In the timer component, find the start timer function and call it. Then, use the on timer update event to update the timer text every second. Compile and save your changes. If the timer runs out, the timer component will auto trigger the on times up event. Create a function to handle losing the game when the timer reaches zero. Go to the widget, duplicate the function for the set text to lose when it reaches zero and remove the input pin. Compile and save, change the default time to 5 seconds for testing. When the timer runs out, you should see a times up message. Now we finish the countdown timer and lose scenario. For the winning scenario, duplicate the function and set the timer to win. In the level blueprint, select the trigger box and add an event for when the player overlaps it. Open the level blueprint, create a reference to the trigger box and cast it to the first person. Character. If the player reaches the trigger box with time remaining, they win. Connect the timer widget and set the timer text to win. Ensure the player's time is greater than zero to win. If the player's time is greater than zero when they touch the trigger box, Pause the timer, set the text to win, and compile and save. Set the default time back to 60 seconds for a longer play session. Now, let's test the game. The timer should run perfectly, and if you reach the destination in time, you'll see it you win a message. 
the timer component handles all the timing logic. You just need to use the events provided by the timer. It's very useful and saves a lot of time. Thank you for watching this tutorial.